Okay, so now that I'm recording, um, so we're going to be talking about how to survive debate and just some tips I have for you all. And now that we're done with the camp, you probably hopefully learned some new things. Um, so now you can prepare for this upcoming season. And so these are some ways you can do that and ways you can do it well. So let me share my screen. Um, okay, so how to survive debate. That is the topic. Um, okay, so first thing you need to be doing right after this call ends, I'm just kidding, it's not that intense, but what you should be doing is figuring out what tournaments you're going to go to so you can start preparing. Um, so it's basically August, which is crazy. It's like one week and then it's August. And I don't, I, I, our school will, for you may start in August. For me, it starts at like the end of August. Um, so that means tournaments, begin in September so we really have like about a month that you can start preparing really depending on what tournaments you want to go to um so the first thing you should try to figure out is where's your school going like what um, tournaments is your school attending um this whole coronavirus and school like tournaments being online might change your tournament schedule so the first thing I'd advise you to do is um figure out your tournament schedule maybe your coaches have announced that maybe they haven't try to figure that out soon um, and then the next thing you should figure out is what are your goals? Um, so you, this year, now that things are online, there's a lot of tournaments that you can actually go to without your school going to. Um, you have to like apply and get accepted to be able to go. But um, I think that means it opens up a lot more doors. So you personally should figure out what your goals are. Um, do you want to try to bid for the TOC and LD? Um, or do you want to do it in policy? Um, do you want to, or do you want to try to get one bid, two bids? I don't know. Try to figure out what your end goal is. Um, do you want to qualify for NSCA nationals, um, in any event, in a certain event, just whatever your goal is. Um, and then also, do you just want to go to tournaments for experience? Um, that's totally like a value, like that is a very valuable experience to just go to tournaments to learn. Um, and I, I would recommend if you're like a younger debater, um, that maybe just have the goals of going for experience. So you need to figure out what your goals are. Um, and then you need to figure out what your partner's goals are. Um, and this is really big because if you and your partners have very different goals, the goals are not going to be met. And so you need to communicate with your partner um, what your goals are and personally know what your like personal goals are. Next, you need to figure out what can you afford. Um, can you only afford to go to in-state tournaments? Um, can you only afford to go to a couple national tournaments a semester? So you need to figure that out. And then you also need to figure out what is the quality of a tournament. Since everything is online, you need to figure out um, on the tournament invitation on Tab Room, it has like what type of system the tournament is running over. So if they're using um, the same format as NSCA Nationals use, if they're using a similar one to the TOC, um, if they're having different Zoom rooms, whatever their format is, you need to figure out what the quality of tournament that is um, and like who's running it and things like that because you don't want to waste your time going to a bad tournament that is going to be poorly run, especially if it's online and like the Zoom stuff is messed up, that can really screw your entire experience. So that's the next thing you need to figure out yourself. So the first step is to choose where you're wanting to go. Okay, the next slide is what to do while you're there. So now that things are going to be online, um, if you watch my lecture about online debating, um, I talk about like the new system of online debating and what that's going to look like. But a lot of these same tips apply to online debating as they do in in-person debating. So the first thing you need to do is eat. Um, everyone gets hangry. And so if you literally aren't eating for an entire day while you're doing online debate, you're going to be grumpy. You also need to hydrate yourself. Um, this probably sounds self-explanatory, but I don't know how many tournaments I've gone to where I'm like, I get home and I'm like, I never ate anything the entire day because you're just so busy. Um, and so it's very important that you're nourishing your body because your brain needs food. You need brain food. And so eat something. Also, drinking something is the same thing. I usually drink when I'm at a tournament, but not eat. So anyway, please drink water. Um, and the next thing is you need to communicate with everyone involved about how you're going to the tournament. So First off, obviously, you need to communicate with your family, um, you know, especially with things being online, like, is your parent going to be home? Is your dad going to decide to mow the lawn that morning that you're having a debate tournament? Like, you don't know what everything is going on. So it's really important 
that you make sure your brothers and sisters aren't screaming when you have a debate round. So you need to communicate with your family. Um, you also need to obviously communicate with your partner. Are you going to their house? Are they coming to your house? Um, are y'all just gonna FaceTime each other? How is that type of stuff gonna work? And then obviously your teachers. Um, I think this year, you like I know when we are actually traveling to tournaments, you miss so much school. And so to make sure you're not falling behind in class, it's really important that you communicate with your teachers. Hey, I'm going to Chicago, to Florida, wherever this weekend to go to a tournament. And so I'm going to get your work done either before the day you're leaving or after the day you're leaving, whatever. So you need to communicate with your teachers so you have a good relationship with them. But also, if you're doing online debate, you might have to leave the last class of the day to go home or you might like not be able to do your online class. I feel like it's not going to interfere with school as much, which is another pro of online debating because most rounds start at four o'clock and I, my school gets out before then. So that's nice. Um, but yeah, so that's, you need to figure, you need to communicate with everyone. So that's what you should do during the tournament to survive. Um, and the next thing you should do between rounds at online tournaments or in-person tournaments is the first thing you need to do is just relax. Um, you need to take a brain break. And so like stop prepping all your novice, stop prepping 20 like rounds ahead of time. Just relax for a second, get some food, sit down with your partner maybe like get on your phone, like play games. I don't know. That's like a good way to relax. Um, and then also you should practice in between rounds. So I know I just said relax and practice. That's pretty contradictory, but hopefully you can find time to do both. Um, if you're doing policy, you probably won't, but anyway, so you can plan, um, you can plan like what arguments you're going to read the next round, um, plan. If you make it to out rounds, what, like what your strategy is going to be. You can also prep. Um, this is really important you should prep and make sure you're prepared for every single round and just doing those things in between rounds can really make a difference. Um, especially if you just went like every time you get out of a debate round, you learn something. So maybe you should look at what your judges like RFD was, what was their critiques for the debate round and then fix your case in between rounds to make it better of what your judge said. So things like that. Um, and then the next thing is really what I wanted this um, little like topic lecture to be about. Um, is just talking about how do you balance life and debate. Um, this past year, it was it, I did not do it well. Like, I was so bad at balancing my life and debate. Um, and so these are some things that I learned during this past year. And I think hopefully you have already learned these or you can, like, implement them next year. I think with tournaments being online, again, I think it might change some things. Um, but debate isn't your entire life, and that's something to realize that – winning every single round does not like make you a human. And so you need to make sure you're keeping up other parts of your life to do well and like succeed. Um, so the first thing is that school is the most important thing. Um, I know a lot of times debaters are like, I just love debate so much and I'm only going to prep and not do my uh, AP biology homework for this entire week. And then you are like having a C in AP bio and you need to like figure your life out. So first thing is you need to get all of your school stuff together before you're worrying about debate, which is hard to do. I like usually like I need to do that better and like work on that. Um, but if your grades are slacking, like if you have all C's because you're so busy with debate, I mean, a C isn't a bad grade. I don't know why I keep saying a C. Like I'm just saying if you're failing all your classes, maybe that's a sign that you should take a break for a little bit. Um, and I think with like there being online tournaments, that might mean you're going to even more tournaments than you ever have before. And every single week and you have tournaments, so you're prepping all week. Um, you need to make sure you're valuing your grades. And then also you need to communicate with your teachers that like, hey, can I make like this? This is just an idea. Maybe you can ask them if you could have like an extension or just explain to them why you didn't turn in late work or something like that. Because of debate, you should also communicate with your coaches and your family. Um, if your mom is like attacking you because you have a bad grade in something, try to explain to her that like, that's the problem. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the moral of the story is make sure your grades are good and that you're working on your grades because you're going to have a hard time in life if you fail all your classes, but you do successful in debate. So that's that. Um, next thing is don't put the weight of your entire team's well-being on your shoulder. Um, Trey and I kind of did this this past year because we don't have like we didn't have a coach or like varsity members and so we were constantly prepping for the novice constantly prepping for ourselves trying to make sure everyone is like doing well trying to help everyone prep and first off like as a debate captain or a leader on your team your job is to lead other people to do that but it's not to do it all yourself 
Um, and so I think it's really important that you're not prioritizing like the novice before your grades or your mental like health. Um, and so it's really important that obviously you want the best for your team and you want to be able to prep as much as you can for your team and help all the novice learn, but it's not entirely your job and it shouldn't be all of that weight doesn't need to be on you. Um, so first thing you can do is like spread it to other people, spread it to other JV or varsity. Um, and then also just be like, Hey, novice, I am a junior or senior and I have a lot of going on. So I'm sorry that like, I can't help you do this. Um, but you just have to be able to balance things. Um, and then the next thing is something that I don't know, it's hard for me to sometimes cope with is that it's okay to like skip a tournament or not like not attend a tournament. Um, it's okay to take a break. Like you might need to take a couple months off just for your mental health because debate is kind of toxic in some ways and it can be harmful for your mental health if you're putting everything into debate and so it's important that you realize it's okay to take a break it's okay to not attend every tournament and you just have to prioritize things and I know that's a way harder said than done but it's okay to take a break and I think that's something we think about um and then again the next thing is you need to figure out what you're prioritizing um if like college apps are coming and you have college apps or something maybe you should value like applying to college maybe more than attending 20 debate tournaments or um i don't know like maybe you're in band or orchestra or i don't know just any other activity um it, you need to prioritize things and figure out what your end goal is and so that can also help um and then also your mental health is really important um there's a really toxic debate mentality that i'm trying to crush but I think it's gonna be hard for a while. Of what I'm talking about is like no sleep, getting two hours of sleep before debate tournament, drinking 20,000 coffees, um, working 24 seven, never taking a break, never like just relaxing because you're so busy with debate and working on debate. And that isn't good for you. It's not good for your mental health. Um, winning a debate round is not worth like struggling mentally. Um, and so anyway, that's just everything I have to say about that. And it's, it's hard to do but you just have to prioritize and yeah. Okay, I think there might be another slide. Um, okay, and then the next thing, just going off of that, if debate is your top priority, that's totally awesome. And like, I support that. Um, most high school debates have been my top priority. And so I think that's totally cool, but if not, that's okay. And if you're just wanting to attend tournaments and do well at the tournaments you go to, but it's not your entire life, like that's okay, that's good. Um, and just make sure you and your partner are on the same page, which is also something hard. Like you shouldn't be lying to your partner about how committed you are or what your goals are just because you don't want to let them down or you just want to keep being partners with them. It's not fair to you or them and also your mental health. Uh, it's just a whole thing. So anyway, key things to take away is mental health. Um, take a break if you need to communicate with everyone, your teachers, your coaches, your partner, your friends, everyone. Um, and yeah, so that's just my tips for, how do I, I'm trying to log off. Um, hold on. Oh, there we go. Um, 